Alrighty. Here we have Selena Worrell, one, one half of uh, the Worrell marriage, I suppose. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what would you call it? Well, I that's the co-founder of Zonified. I interviewed Paul Worrell on my YouTube channel about a year ago. No, no, it was early no? this year. Early this year, wow. I think it was June. Okay. June. Because we wanted to come to Greensea. Yeah, they did. They, they, uh, they emailed me and said, can we come on the show? I've got something interesting to talk about. And also, can we do the interview with him a fish and chip shop in Grimsby, which is where I live. Which and they were because they were saying they were little bikers and they wanted to bike across the country and then do a live interview. Yeah. So that was yeah. on Skype and then we'll yeah, that was we'll the point. So, How do you do it on Skype? Okay. So Celine's so going to talk to you about the Zonified app and what that's doing to do a bunch of things, including eradicate fraud. Yes. Right. So give it up for Celine. Okay. Right. I'm just going to introduce you Okay, right, so I'm Selena Moore, I'm the co-founder of Zonified, and can I just say, being a local company, we're actually based near Nuneaton, we must be one of the very few, yeah, oh, there we are. So, when Joe, Steve, uh, was talking about Bitra, uh, I was really excited to be here because we often, when we're doing any blockchain events or presenting, it's in London. You know, our train bill to London is pretty high, especially... And that hurts, especially because we're self-funded and have been for about three years. So this is fantastic to be in Birmingham and rigging blockchain and Bitcoin, etc. to Birmingham. So before I, well, what I'm going to do is give you a brief overview of what Zonified is, the wallet, applications of the wallet, uh, introduce you to the team, and say a little bit about our token generation, or otherwise known as ICO event, which we have potentially planned for January. But before I start, I'd just like to share with you some of the recognition that we're beginning to get from the Ethereum community. We've been working with Ethereum since early last year. We were one of the early adopters of Ethereum. And I've been involved with the blockchain uh, environment for over two years now. So, but we're well, we're based in the Midlands, we were, we're not working directly with the Ethereum community. So then, when we got some recognition from Ethereum, that was great. We were invited to present at Ethereum London in March of this year. Stefan Twal, who did this diagram, is one of the founders uh, of Ethereum. Very kindly then in May, when he put this Web3 abstractive stack diagram out, he included Zonified as one of the uh, dApps built on the Web3 abstracted stats. So for us, getting that recognition was, uh, was great. Um, this is the team, I'm not gonna, I'm talk, gonna talk a little bit about the team later, I just wanna point out what myself and Paul are, we've been working with Zonified, on Zonified rather, for over two years now. Paul, who is the founder and the chief developer, has uh, about 30 years in career in distributed computing and software technology mainly in financial services. He's also a software entrepreneur. Um, he's done this a couple, a few times before. He actually left uh, J.P. Morgan Chase in 2014 as global lead architect to build Zonify. The rest of the team I'll, I'll talk about a little bit about later. Myself, I'm the co-founder. I have actually got a background in teaching. And I left to join Zonify full-time in September 2015. And I've built out the first use case with UK local governments, and I'm now working with service providers to adopt Zonified. <coughs> okay, so what is Zonified? Zonified is a digital wallet for securing activities, for securing the important things you're doing. Um, and our goal is, is just like you send messages and pictures, we want it to be that you can as easily send someone an assurance, someone being, say, an organization, that an activity you're doing, something important that you're doing, is genuine. And the key differentiator is we enable family, friends, and professionals to help in giving that assurance. And by getting people to work together like that, and by involving just one extra person, makes it significantly less likely that you become a victim of fraud. But most importantly, it also just makes all of your activities much easier to verify 
as legi legitimate and just much easier to do. It takes out a lot of friction that is involved for a lot of people now when they want to carry out important activities. But Zonified is a decentralized app, a DAP <coughs> built uh, using smart contracts on the Ethereum platform. And this is a view of the DAP. It's been in uh, MVP, Minimum Viable Products, since October 2016. It is available on Google Play for download and in Apple Test Flight. I've got three views of the app here. The first view, I should be using my pointer there, but uh, the first view is the activities view. So this is when, when, you, when you want to create something important, you create an activity. These are the activities we see as small workflows. Uh, they're in various states. Uh, they're in various states of their activity at the moment because that's at one point you create the activity, you add an acknowledger, that is somebody who's acknowledging that it is your activity, somebody within your social or professional network, and then you pass it to the person or organization you want to carry, carry the activity out with. That's the verifier. Uh, the middle uh, view is the view of the activity which is in fact a smart contract on the blockchain. It uh, must point out, very very important, it carries no data. The data is passed through other means. Each activity has various attributes. So just You can just quite see the, the number, that's the actual address of the activity. It will say who the acknowledgers are, who the verifiers are. The, the third view is shows the roles that you can play, that's the menu, the, uh, the settings, the, the roles that you can play in Zonify. First one obviously is activity, you can create an activity. Secondly is you can acknowledge an activity because Zonify is all about enabling people and organisations to work together to secure those activities. And the third is to verify, it has got an inbuilt feature to verify, you can verify other people's activities. As we are working with quite a few organisations now, organisations, we're building our enterprise toolkits because organisations won't be using their mobile phones if they have them. They, they will require enterprise tools to verify customers' activities. Those, those are being built up. You'll notice on the first view there's a credit. To use this app, it's on the blockchain, and as for all uh, apps on the blockchain, you need credit to use it to pay for the computation process the transactions. If you download the app, say, off Google Play, it, uh, and you want to use our test network, it does actually default to our test network, we will pass you some testing. I'd like to say we'll pass you some ETH, but we're self-funded, so sorry, can't pass you the ETH. We might have done had it been, maybe even just last year, it was $12 an ETH, or $4 an ETH, or whatever it was last year, but at the present, I think this morning, when we checked, it was 300 and... Chris, tell me, how much was it this morning? $370? 365 Or was it? 375 yeah. So, yeah, it's testy, guys. It's, it's testy for the passing. So that's, uh, that's the view of the wallet. Uh, we are one of the very first to have a working DAP built on the Ethereum blockchain. That's for non-financial applications. Um, if, but before we even built this wallet, before we adopted blockchain technology, we were already working on a problem around identity theft, cybercrime, and we wanted to find a better way for people to be in control of what they're doing and protect people's activities from any cybercrime or malfeasance. So that we, as we were working on a problem, we wanted before we even built any technology to find a use case where we could find enough participants with motivation to use the product. What I mean is we wanted to find out what's called a go-to-market strategy. And we found that, and this is even before we adopted blockchain technology, we found that with local governments in live events. And we've been working with the UK uh, local governments across England and Wales now for over two years. Uh, we do have agreements with some of them. We have a number of them waiting for this to go live as well. Uh, what the local these are registrars in local governments. What they'll be doing is they will be acknowledging live events for the public. This enables the registrars. The motivation for them is it's 
very little technology that they have, new technology that they have to adopt, in fact, hardly anything. Um, and they, they will get paid by the public for this acknowledgement. The life events I'm talking about are marriages, deaths, and other life events. We are starting with marriage, that's the first use case we're going live with. So our focus now is working with service providers. We're working with a number of uh, quite large organisations in financial services, insurances, utility companies, telcos, to, to have, enable them to accept these zonified uh, activities. For the service providers, their motivation is increasing automation and cut costs, it improves their customers' experience and it gives them another look in to engage with their customers, especially during, during quite important life events. Um, let me go delve just a little bit deeper into this thing we call an activity. So an activity is something important, something important you are doing that you want to protect. The activity itself, you can see uh, the view there is a smart contract. The owner, the activity owner, creates the activity. We will also have templates for people to download, and that's part of our proposition to developers um, to create different uh, activity templates, which are, like I said earlier, small workflows. So the activity owner creates the activity and then has an acknowledger, somebody within their social or professional network, acknowledge that activity. There's two types of acknowledgers. They can be authoritative, so somebody lending their professional status, say a solicitor, a bank official, or as in our first use case, a registrar, or a mutual, that is somebody that's pre-nominated, say, to a service provider. Um, pre-nominated might be uh, somebody, it could be your partner, it could be parents, it could be friends, or for vulnerable people, it could be their family or carers. Uh, these are pre-nominated with the personal organisation you want to verify your activity. Uh, once acknowledged, that activity is then passed to a verifier. So it could be, say, BT, Barclays, HSBC, British Gas, etc. And for the verifiers, for service providers, it's very easy, it's quite simple to accept a zonified activity. They just have to have, have a node or they can use our node, and they just accept the zonified activity of the blockchain. We chose the blockchain because actually organizations, people can use it, and organizations have no excuse not to use it. It's like saying, for service providers, it would be like saying, we don't use the internet, because that's where the blockchain is. Um, for verifiers, they just pick up the activity and then they can just refer, uh, they just revert to, or to to service that activity, they just revert to their normal customer processes. So if I give you an example of how this works in our first use case with local authorities, uh, this is a newlywed name change activity because we're starting with marriage. A person who's getting married, if they wish to change their name after they get married, the registrar is going to offer them and uh, inform them of Zonified when they go for their in this country it's called a notice of marriage so before you get married you actually have an interview with the registrar you have to give notice of marriage and at that point the registrars will be offering the public the zonified wallet the newlywed if they uh, they can uh, download the wallet after they get married it's as simple as on the phone um, the newlywed just holds up the phone with the activity the QR code I showed you, the registrar just has to, I suppose, sign it. That's it, that's all the registrars have to do. When we've done training events with registrars, they've been kind of short and sweet affairs because that's, that's it, that's all they have to do. A lot of, we just have to talk around for 45 minutes or an hour or two hours we've, have, we've had with registrars when we've been doing the training because literally that is all they have to do. Once the registrar acknowledges it, the newlywed can choose from a list of service providers that they want to share this activity with, uh, they said, so for the newlywed, the problem it solves is it saves them the time, money, and the frustration of contacting each service provider independently to do the same thing, which is, I want to change my name. So they get a one-click service to change their name with their service providers. The service providers 
pick up the activity, see what their known customer wants to do. I've shown there's an authoritative registrar, Oracle. The service providers will have the, they'll be able to check that the registrar that has acknowledged this activity is the registrar whom they were expecting or is a known registrar and that, that first oracle, our Zonified will operate that first oracle. So we will have a, an oracle with all the registrars on there and they can check this as a registrar from Milton Keynes, from Warwick, from Birmingham, South Wales, etc. Uh, once satisfied, the service provider just con now converts to their, rather reverts to their normal customer service processes and p processes that activity for their customer. Uh, another activity which can, this can be, the product can be used now is in house purchase payments. In this country, cybercrime and the phishing of house purchase payments is one of the fastest growing cybercrimes in the conveyancing process. Uh, this activity can be, uh, this, uh, the house purchase payment activity can be used now using our wallets. A solicitor would, in this case, create the activity. They could have another solicitor within the firm or from a solicitor oracle uh, acknowledge that they, this is a known solicitor with their payment details. They put the payment details, which will be passed by other means, and then into the acti activity. And then the solicitor just shares that with the buyer. And the buyer is informed that until you receive this activity, you don't make the payment. And the payment is made to this specific sort code and account number. It can also be shared with the bank. So that the bank is aware that the payment should be made and where it should be made. Uh, with the fraud that's happening, and you can imagine the kind of sums of money that people are losing, what's been happening, one of the ways that this happens is, uh, it's called the Friday afternoon fraud because the email phishing through social engineering is done just at the time when people are busy, they want to, they're about to move the money to the solicitor's account. Or, um, the email gets phished, the buyer thinks it's an email from the solicitor, sends the money to that account, and then the following week, Tuesday, Wednesday, when the solicitor may contact them and say the money's not gone through, far too late, the money's already been taken, and in this case, neither the solicitors nor the banks are taking any responsibility. The person that loses out, loses out is the house buyer, and to solve that problem, Zonified wallet could be used now. Um, just a quick one to say, it isn't just say people who can use it, organizations can also use it. We've been talking to organizations who, uh, there's again the problem is we get many people get emails or texts from the bank, HSBC, and other banks are available, um, Barclays, HSBC, whoever, saying there's been fraud or contact the bank, click on this link, and we're not sure, is this Barclays, or you get a phone call, am I talking to Barclays or HSBC? Uh, in that case, what could happen now, how organizations are looking at using Zonified is they would create an activity, have somebody within Barclays or HSBC say, yes, this is an, an activity, an authorized activity with the customer, the activity is created and sent to the customer who can verify it. So, and for the customer to verify it, uh, it's as simple as when they would receive the activity and they know it's from their bank because just like now when you go to make a payment on your online banking, you, you are advised and you should obviously always check the padlock in the corner to check that it is the legitimate uh, website of the bank. The same way the customer will be educated to know that when the text comes, they will check that this is a text from their service provider. The customer can then be confident that this is a genuine activity from their genuine uh, service provider bank, etc. To help vulnerable people, and that, this is one of the points of interest for some of the organisations we're working with, uh, for vulnerable people, they can nominate, pre-nominate a family member or a carer who can also be an, an acknowledger to reassure the customer <coughs> that this is a, a valid activity with their organisation. So that's one way to use Zonified with the 
by organisations. Again, just wanted to share this with you because we, like I said, we are self-funded. We don't have a, a marketing machine behind us. We've used all our money to build the product, and hence, and we've always focused on the product. This is an interview that we did, well, Paul had with Simon Taylor of it's a blockchain consultancy. They're actually quite very well thought of. Uh, we did this podcast with them about a month ago, and Simon Taylor said he that Zonified was one of the best applications of blockchain technology he'd seen. And um, so Simon has seen quite a lot of applications of blockchain technology. So again, for us, uh, this was it's great to get that kind of feedback. Um, I've said that we're self-funded, so we are going to do token generation event, or AKA ICO. Uh, the white paper is out on our website. You can download it, have a look at it. We, we are welcoming feedback. It's out for consultation. What we, what we are going to create is a together token, a TOG, which users can exchange for services between each other. It is a utility token. We've engaged and been working with CMS Navarro, who are a, law, a London law firm. They provided legal counsel. We are kosher. We're not a security. We are a utility. And the funds that we're raising are to take this product live. It has many applications. I've spoken to you only about a few of the applications. And to go operational, particularly with the first use case with local governments. That's what we intend to use the funds for. This is the team. Uh, I've mentioned Paul, I'm the co-founder. We're building out the team in preparation for the proposed ICO. A couple of developers we do have, we can't mention their names because as anybody will know who works for a, 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 a company, particularly a bank, you cannot lend your name or be involved in anything else. So we can't name them, but they're there. Uh, a couple of notable mentions are Chris Hitchcock and Sean G. They are, Sean G is the co-founder of Digix Global, which is one of the first ICOs that uh, in March 2016, they raised, I think, 5 million in 12 hours. That's, that was one of the first ICOs to go live. They're very well thought of. Uh, they've joined us as advisors. Chris Hitchcock, actually, is from, I think, watch, Redditch or Walsall, although he's based in Singapore now. He, um, so he's joining us as a country, well, they have already joined us as contributors and advisors. Uh, I spoke while well, I was speaking, speaking to Chris earlier but about tokens. We've had to do, to, in preparing for the ICO, we've had to think very carefully about what does a token mean to our business model? What does it mean to the use of our DAP? What does it mean to our users? You know, if the price of a, the token goes high, it actually makes it prohibitively expensive for our users to use it. So there's a lot to think about in tokenomics. We have somebody uh, who's very well qualified, Bernie Fleischmann, and his sole job is going to be looking at tokenomics. His background, he's worked with Paul before. Um, his background, again, is in financial services. Uh, he's actually, Paul first met Bernie uh, in Geneva, when Bernd was working for CERN, the, that's the organization that's building the, was built the Large Hydron Collider. Um, it's a bit serendipitous because Paul was talking to a number of people and just three desks away from Bernd was a guy called Tim Berners-Lee. So it would have been a very different story had Paul just walked into Tim Berners-Lee and got him interested, but it was Bernd. Um, Sufi, and again, he's a guy from, but we seem to be building kind of a, Midlands and international team. He's from uh, Birmingham. He's looking at the key management. I think anybody who's got any crypto, who's involved in blockchain or Bitcoin, knows that managing your keys is a big part. Yes, you own them. Yes, you're in control. But managing them, securing them, uh, moving them around uh, is, is a new, almost a new industry. We're looking at this. We've got this young guy, Suf, uh, Sufyan, working on that. We've got uh, Dan, he's our community manager. And lastly, uh, Benny Tarrant is a comedian. He's one of the first known official victims of identity theft in this country. He's a comedian, um, yet yeah, often opens for Ricky Gervais. And uh, Bennett did a Channel 4 documentary on identity theft in which he very famously stole the, to show how 
easy it is to steal identities or take identities. He stole the identity of the then Secretary Charles Clark and was uh, arrested in a dawn raid by Scotland Yard. He's written about it in a book. It seems, it's, it seems funny now, but at the time when he was arrested, uh, it wasn't very funny. It was a pretty scary experience for him. He did get off, but um, so Bennett is involved with us. He, uh, he's a great supporter of Zonified. That's the team as it stands. Um, these are our contacts. We'd love for people to join us on our, we're trying to build our community, so if you could follow us on Twitter. Um, if you want to make any comments or ask questions, you can ask them on Reddit or uh, Telegram. We're trying to build our Telegram um, community as well, so just join us on Telegram. We've got quite a few videos out on YouTube. Some of them are quite boring. Um, <laughs> But what can you do? We, we're not active. We did, we did a founder's video about three weeks ago. And someone said, God, you look really tired and you, you not, seem to be smiling a lot, etc. But actually, when you see these newscasters and they're smiling, I can assure you that's work. How you can say something and be smiling. And so, yeah, we, we're not actors. So, you watch the founder's video and just think this was done in their front room with lights. Uh, etc. Lots of takes. I think there's one take where Paul, who's a developer, is saying, uh, F this, I just want to get back to writing code. Um, I think we're just going to release that one as a meme or whatever you call it. Uh, so, anyway, Gitter for the developers, we're on Gitter as well. Uh, thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Uh, I think a couple of quick questions. Okay. The inquisitive mind over here, let's have a spot. Uh, what software licenses do you use? Software licenses, well, we're using it, the Ethereum, I I'm not sure what you say, what software licenses. Is it um, free software or uh, MIT or <coughs> server licenses? Well, a lot of, obviously, Ethereum is free software, so a lot of the software that we're using is, I think, open source. Paul's a big open source believer in open source. So. So, uh, the other question is, um, you talk about uh, effectively you've got your um, oracles of yes. trusted parties. Yes. So how would you imagine your system rolling out into a place where you can't trust any third parties? So ah. if you're in, it's all very well for us. Living yes. In this lovely, safe yeah, place. Western so democracy. So how do you roll it out beyond that? Well, that's where we say enabling people to it together. So you use the people that you you can trust, and then you can pass their trust to other parties. In that case, I'm going to ask you what about a civil attack under that circumstance. So if, if I have a friend of a friend network, yeah. uh, then I can invent a load of sock puppets and they can vouch for me. And now I have what appears to people who aren't connected to me directly to be a real community behind me, but it's all sock puppets. What about that? Well, I think technically I might not go to answer that question, but I do know Paul, who's also got a background in semantic web technologies. Um, I think he, he has got his eye in the architecture, there is a solution for that to, um, I, think, I don't know if you're familiar with Keybase.io, yeah, so it's a kind of similar model, so it's there. Some of the, so some of the, questions, you're, well, the questions you're asking, we do have a roadmap, so on the roadmap there might be something in there, but other than that, within the architecture that is something that Paul has thought very much about, so it's there. Yeah. I've got time for one more question. What's been about this time? Oh, it's a very interesting product. Oh, thank it's you. Good to hear. So essentially, you're you're making use of the KYC uh, label customer, and I think answering this uh, chat question here, I think maybe you can mention artifact authentication to make sure it's a human, not bot. Verify that there. Just a person. Yeah. I think the whole point is that it's people, it's not a bot, because it's got to be people that you know, and often it's got to be people that have seen you, uh, especially when we talk about your own social network. 